So, as you saw by the title of uh, today's video, <clears throat> why is society afraid of the mystic, the seer, the poet? Well, I put that question to the unconscious or to the soul. And this was the answer that I got. This is what I wrote a few years ago. Okay. When you live your own unique life from the heart and are an envoy to this feminine mystery of the soul we call nature, which lives and speaks through you, people who are afraid of their inner voice, yeah, afraid of nature, afraid of the dimensions of the numinous and having suppressed their nature will live an approved by society rational existence will be afraid of you. That's exactly right. And this is what Jung said about the same thing. In truth, a force of nature expresses itself through me. I am only a channel, a mediator. I can imagine many instances when I would become sinister to you. For instance, if life had led you to take up an artificial attitude, that's what I said above, then you wouldn't be able to stand me because I'm a natural being. By my very uh, presence, I crystallize, I am ferment. The unconscious of people who live in an artificial manner senses me as a danger. Everything about me irritates them. My way of speaking, my way of laughing, the, they, uh, they sense nature. Now, why is nature, you know, <coughs> so uh, frightening to people, to the masses, especially to the people that are paying attention always to outside rules and role, um, uh, laws and politicians and the religious type? The ones that beat themselves over the head with the scripture all the time and believe everything that is written in there. You know, uh, we can talk about the uh, Judaism and Christianity and, and, and Islam in our Western tradition. They fear nature, they fear the spirit, which they call the irrational. You know, to this day, if you were to go to a psychologist and you are telling them um, that you have direct experiences of something larger than you, of something infinite, of some kind of numinous, you know, you're going to be labeled as crazy. You're going to be put on tranquilizers. There's uh, psychology, it, it only deals with what's rational, that is to say how you fit into this sick society. It does not deal with you having a personal relationship with God, with the divine, with the spirit. So if you come and you say, you know, I've written this wonderful poetry, I don't understand what happens and or what it means, and I've been writing this poetry for years, and they are, gonna, they are going to put you on strong, strong tranquilizers. They don't, put, they don't lock you up in the house, in the home for the crazy anymore. That's been shut down. The, you know, the, um, the, the funding has been removed for that. <laughs> but, you say, but you're going to be put on tranquilizers. You know, you're going to be crazy. You're going to be marked as crazy. <laughs> you know, so anyway, one of the reasons or the big reasons why in our Western society uh, people fear people, the, the mediators, the poets, uh, the, the seers, the people that have direct uh, connection with the spirit, with, with, with the divine, is because this is considered nature. And nature in our Western culture is fallen. That is to say, it has, uh, you know, we in our religion, we see the earth as a fallen place, uh, you know, and all its nature is fallen. The, and our task is to get through this life as, as uh, you know, beat yourself with the scripture as much as possible. You know, uh, remember, you know, download all this, program yourself with this and with the scripture, and then you're going to be sent to heaven. You're going to be rewarded in the place which is not fallen. That is to say, you know, heaven and earth are not the same. And here in nature is fallen. So it needs to be corrected. It needs to be um, uh, changed. You know, that's why women get, uh, have been persecuted now for thousands of years. Because of this ideology. That uh, women, women are nature, in intuition, spirit. They are the embodiment of the feminine divine.
there's two minds there's the masculine mind the rational mind and the feminine uh, and, the, and the feminine which is the intuitive mind so that needs to be corrected to this day intuition is laughed at by sciences and so on because it's irrational there's no proof yeah um, another reason is uh, why people are so afraid of uh, uh, where, why we don't really value uh, uh, poets and seers and, and mystics in our societies because uh, the fear uh, that there's also the fear that you can't control them you see because they have a direct line to something higher than their own authority than the political authority of any country for this reason, uh, you know, these people are feared because they cannot be controlled. Many of such people have been killed and are still being killed. Well, you know, previously they were killed physically from about the 17th century to the 19th century. You know, three centuries of, of the burning times called the burning times where the witches were killed. They were not only burned on the stake. They were hanged, they were drowned, they were, they, were, they were murdered in all sorts of terrible ways, sometimes left in the prison to rot. Not only women, mostly women, but also men. And these people were, were uh, feared and, and hated because they were, told that they, they were labeled as having a direct connection with something evil. So there's the, 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 there's the distinction between the good which is the scripture, which is God in the scripture, and evil, if you have a direct connection to, 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 the, uh, to the numinous, to the divine, they, this was called demonic, demonic possession. You were not allowed. So people were hiding all these things, all these direct connections. That's why alchemists, for instance, when you read alchemy, the original text, are all written in, in, uh, in cold. So that uh, you know that the people, the Inquisition, and also they couldn't, you know, they couldn't be uh, um, uh, killed, uh, you know, got rid of, because they had a different view on the on the spirit. They had a di di direct connection. If you have a direct connection. The church does not have; uh, it, it's not needed. So there's power there. The, the, that power that the church, for instance, had for so many thousands of years is gone because you don't need the church. You just directly speak with God. So that's the huge fear. Um, another reason uh, why, for instance, um, I've experienced with the, the people that I work in my own personal life is that when you are open out the back and you're speaking with spirit directly, uh, you receive the answers and so on, like I received when I was asking this question, why is society so afraid of poets and seers? <clears throat> is when you are living, when, you, when you're working with someone uh, very closely on this and they are not quite ready yet, um, the spirit, when you, because you're open yourself and you're receiving answers and the spirit is me, you mediating between the spirit and the, and the community, you know, that uh, opening, th that uh, energy, that uh, numinous, it jumps. It is around you. So if someone is close to you, it's going to touch them. And when people are not ready, they still fear, or they've been programmed to fear this and label this as evil, it's going to frighten them. I know people like this, and, uh, you know, uh, a man... Uh, you know, he, he, he's, he had to move out of the room and, and into another bedroom because he couldn't sleep with his wife in the same bed because it frightened her. She had, ter she had dreams which she couldn't understand, huge archetypal dreams, because he himself was mediating at that time. He was writing a lot, reading, you know, he was, he was getting the answers directly. And that, uh, in that energy, that spirit touched his wife, who wasn't really ready for that, and it frightened her to hell, really. It frightened her terribly, so she had, so he had to move out to another bedroom. I write about this, I think I write about this in my book, Where We Dreamed a Single Dream. You know, um, another reason is, uh, like I said, control. Uh, it's not only control uh, of the state, 
and the state of the of the church wants to control of you, wants to control of you if you don't need the uh, rules and rules and you, you don't uh, you don't allow yourself to be controlled because you have direct access to something higher more important uh, then of course you're going to be uh, dangerous to them so they will uh, like you like i said in the past you were murdered or killed disappeared these days you're cancelled you, you you can see this on the internet every day if you don't follow the narrative that is approved, if you have, if you think for yourself, you do your own research, you get your own, especially if you get your own answers, and you publish those answers, you're gonna get cancelled. You know, the, I know people. I've I've read, I've seen people who've had their bank accounts frozen. They were cancelled. You couldn't find the job after that. You were, you know, you 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 persona non grata. So this goes on to this day. It's just named a little bit differently. And that's why I remember uh, pitching my poetry uh, to someone. Um, uh, this person, she was a, um, uh, not a publisher, she was an agent, a uh, writer's a uh, agent. She was a friend of mine and I knew her well. Uh, she was, uh, I, I was taking some of her creative writing classes at the time. And I was, uh, 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 a lot of my work back then was poetry. And I said uh, that uh, you know I might do a book of poetry and publish that. What did she th What did she think? And she straight away says poetry doesn't sell. See, there's no society has no need for poetry. Prose, if you make a great novel, romance, uh, spy, um, uh, you know, a porn novel, if you like, it will sell. They can sell it on at the, the at the. Uh, at the local uh, airport, they can sell it at the uh, petrol station, they can sell it at your local store. But if you make a, a, a book of poetry, which is, you know, really, if you're a really talented poet, it's mediating. It's what the spirit says to you. That's why it rhymes. It doesn't sell. She said that to me straight away. It's not that she was mean to me. She was actually... Um, uh, part of a covenant, uh, a witch, a really nice person. She was just being honest to me. And she said, that, you know, no one is going to uh, buy this book of poetry f from you, even if she was my, uh, you know, agent. So this is where we are in this society. Um, so, you know, uh, what I really wanted to say to you today is that we, to this day, we're trying to save nature. Nature doesn't need saving. Nature is fine, you know, as it is. It just needs to be left alone. We need to be saved. Humanity. And how we get saved is by making ourselves whole. By making a connection to the spirit. To this divine dimension that speaks to us in our dreams and visions and intuition and in poetry. You know, by recovering our mysticism. Because a lot of people say to say to me, "Oh, I'm already whole, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, spirituality, this and spirituality, that, and love and light, and you know the new age thing. I collect crystals or, or this or the other." You're not whole if you're not connected to that dimension, to the other dimension of your psyche, to the deeper dimension of what you really are. You're not whole. There are two parts of you. Like I said, there's the rational mind which is what we honor in our Western society. And there's the intuitive mind, the feminine. If you're not, uh, direct, if you're not daily connected to that level <coughs> of your mind, the intuitive mind, you don't get your answers or you make a conversation or you build a relationship with this deeper dimension and this wider dimension, the archetypal dimension, the transpersonal dimension, as Stan Groff calls it. You know, the, the archetype is the mythological dimension we all share, all of humanity. The transpersonal is, is uh, you know, history, not just part of your own little tribe, your little uh, personal stuff. That's why it's called personal, you know, personal unconscious and collective unconscious. And there's the transpersonal in between. The transpersonal it could be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, identifying with other species and uh, identifying with other people, experiencing, experiencing, you know, history parts you know parts in history and so on 
maybe a previous lives that's transpersonal the deepest uh, part of our psyche is the, uh, the the archetypal the mythological which is most of my work you know going all the way to the center experiencing what you find at the center you know the the, the tree of life uh, the, the the water of life that bubbles up from its roots the flame might be a blue flame uh, like I described a dream a few uh, videos ago, a person had and then she was walking through the uh, desert landscape and she found this bush that was on, on fire and in blue flame, but the bush wasn't being consumed. It's just the flames were, were, were you know, through it, so were, were uh, uh, flickering. Although there was no voice coming from there, you know, she didn't, she still didn't have that connection to the spirit, but she was at the threshold. And then she climbed up um, up the mountain, which turned out to be an extinguished volcano, where, where a whole of community, the whole of, uh, you know, you could say, all the um, uh, humanity was holding hands and looking inwards. There's no divisions. We're all one. So she had this marvelous dream at the time, uh, you know, when, when she was very close to someone who was, who was uh, um, working really hard and had the connection themselves between the spirit. So it jumps. So like I said, you know, if you're working with someone <coughs> closely, whether you're uh, working as, you know, as a, as a therapist or you're at home with someone and they are still fearing, they still fear the, the spirit, the unconscious, they're still programmed by religion, by our um, Western uh, society, which rejects the intuitive mind, the, the, the level of the spirit. Um, it, it, and it would, and the spirit jumps and it opens them up. That, you know, that's how shamans, uh, a lot of the shamans had the um, psychological breakup, the, 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 the initiation into shamanism. <clears throat> because in their society, in Aboriginal society, you know, the spirit was not rejected. He was part of the uh, society. They paid attention to their dreams. They paid attention to the visions, their intuitions. When they needed advice, it was there. <clears throat> especially in the hunting cultures and later in the agricultural cultures, in the uh, cultures of the goddess. All the art and all the uh, rituals and the, what we have in the work of Maria Gimbutas, you can see that the, 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 the figurines, which she calls the goddesses, are figurines, archetypal figurines of the spirit, of the, of the, of the intuition. The bird, the snake, and the hedgehog, the frog, they all live on a threshold between this dimension and the other. You see? So that's why, the, the, like I said, the shamans, let me have a look at the time. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap it up. The shamans, because they lived in that society, and there were people that were open, other shamans, and they were close to that. And they, it, it opened them up. And the rituals that they were going, it opened them up. You know, in the sun uh, culture, uh, in Africa, they go through the trance state, and they go up and up and up. They, they experience going up the axis mundi to, the, to where the god is. You know, the women sit in the center, they, they clap their hands and their thighs to get the rhythm, to start the rhythm, and the men then dance around, dance around, dance around, until they reach the trance state and woof, off they go. Climbing up, climbing up, climbing up, you know, and he says, the higher I go, the more, uh, the more, um, uh, uh, the more stooped I have to be, the more, uh, you know, I have to make myself small before the numinous, before the, before the image of God. So anyway, so that's what I wanted to talk to you today about is I asked the question uh, once, um, uh, why is it that society, that our society doesn't, is afraid of, doesn't honor the poets, the seers, the mystics? And the answer was is because our society is stuck in the rational mind and is afraid of nature. And nature being spirit, everything in nature is an embodiment, a unique embodiment of spirit. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk to you today uh, about, share some of my own visions and answers that I received. And I hope that you'll be able to be inspired to do your own asking and receive your own questions. Okay, so I'll see you on the next one. Bye.